Hi, I'm Daz, and it looks like my bench has uh, been overtaken by uh, a pussycat. This is Dotty. She's 13 and quite stubborn. She says, no, you're not working on your bench. I've taken it over. Help. <laughs> Here we have in front of us the Fawn Synchro Amp TA01 again. Um, I was contacted by one of my subscribers, um, who also I happen to be subscribed to as well, Edward Norton. Um, Ed's very much into tape recorders and radiograms and vintage um, uh, various vintage items, including clocks and toasters, and he said. Daz, is it possible for you to try and see if we can figure out what's inside this device? Because and neither of us has had any luck at uh, figuring out uh, what uh, the circuitry is in here. Um, but uh, I thought I'd do a bit of filming and uh, see if I can figure out what exactly um, how this is made. Um, if you recall, it connects to a Ferguson uh, reel-to-reel via this... Uh, 9 pin uh, valve type plug which hopefully is in focus and uh, it drives its power from there and then it, it enables it to either be a second channel preamp in order to give you stereo reproduction or it does slide slink uh, slide sync control um, where a tone is in, emphasized on one of the channels and uh, then uh, play back in order to advance a slide projector. Um, so that's what this one's all about. Just looking at the circuitry, oh, the cat's got down now at last. I <laughs> just look at the circuitry, there's a number of switches here that uh, switch over, so they're going to need to be traced out. This one is sync pulse, this one is three and three quarters, seven and a half. Well, that's for playback equalization. This one is play for when you're using it for sync and this one is record and this one is the sync pulse which presumably puts some sort of tone onto the um, tape recorder track. Um, got a relay here. It's got normally closed and normally open so these must be suppression components and then we've got three germanium transistors and a number of electrolytics and resistors. So I'm just trying to figure out at the moment the best way to tackle this one. I see there's a white screen cable here, a blue screen cable here, and it looks like the earth is about to fall off. This screen cable is only connected at this end, and this is the earpiece output. And this socket, once again, is for the side projector, a normally closed and a normally open. And presumably the red and black cables is the uh, minus 30 volts that comes from the uh, reel-to-reel -reel recorder. Just looking at the back again, which is upside down, of course, it would be. Um, <laughs> um, we've got the stereo out, monitor and slide projector sockets seen clearly there. And the knob has fallen off again. And for reference, here is the lid and the position of the switches. There we go. I've placed a light box underneath the uh, circuit board so we can see the tracks. So I thought that might be useful. Although I don't know if that would help me trace it or not. But uh, yeah, it's just an interesting technique that no doubt you've seen before. Okay, so looking at the unit again, I think one of the most confusing things for me is um, this red wire is actually minus 30. And this black wire is common, but it is... Uh, plus, naught volts plus, so that's a little bit confusing. Interestingly, this uh, this common cable only connects to the capacitor, and I'm assuming that's so that you haven't got any ripple current flowing through the signal earths, so they've put a separate cable in for that ground. The rest of them, the ground is picked up from the two cables connected to the dim plug, which goes round to the common here, the screen is connected to the common and there's a connection here to the case, to the headphone ground because 
the headphone has only got the uh, centre core connected here at the switch and this black wire here leads to this resistor and that again is the common point so they've paid some attention here um, I think to um, the earthings and trying to eliminate earth loops so I've just made some notes on the uh, connections to the uh, socket to the tape recorder note about the transistors and notes on the connections for the slide projector and a quick list of components which may or may not be complete um, it's interesting about the transistors used I'm assuming that the 2N2613 is probably a lower noise device because it's the first transistor in the preamp so let's just have a look at that it's very difficult working upside down but never mind okay so the amplifier circuit consists of a pair of transistors and you can see feedback here between the output transistor and the emitter of the first transistor and some switches and a capacitor and this is to change the audio response according to which speed you're on I notice that the base of this transistor is biased from the emitter of the second transistor that's interesting there's a switch here to record uh, to switch the head from being the input to this to being at the output um, power supply simple 5k6 being decoupled into 100 microfarad capacitor when it's switched into record mode for when you're in a slide projector it goes through the sync switch I know it's of interest there's an extra resistor here to the um, emitter of this um, second transistor so whether it's changing the biasing or something I'm not sure um, so that's interesting I notice there's an additional 1.5 microfarad capacity and I'm wondering if that's just to make this amplifier come on and off a little bit more smoother perhaps the output of this is switched according to what mode you're in and obviously three and three quarters and seven and a half switch to the pot and also the headphones headphones seem to be about a 500 pound uh, 500 pound 500 ohm earpiece so yeah this is an interesting little circuit um, so far on here um, you might notice that there's some play and record switches and notice there's a record switch here and I suppose that will become a little bit more clearer when I put the second circuit in that I've drawn here we can see the slide projector part there's a single transistor switching a changeover relay with suppression to eliminate arcs interestingly there's a capacitor which I've had to redraw which is across the transistor and I assume that is for back EMF protection there's no diode here you can see I've drawn in this main smoothing cap with the same black cable the input, the audio output you saw from the preamp just simply is switched in when we're in the play sync mode and I guess this transistor just acts as a diode so when a tone is detected it switches the relay on to advance the projector and as for recording pulses that seems to be done by this section here when it's in the record mode the head is disconnected from the input of the preamp and goes through this resistor and capacitor and another capacitor ground I'm yet to confirm this but it's yellow purple orange and I think that's 47 nanofarad um, then notice it goes out to the head but also notice that there's a switching point here 33k goes back into the base of transistor 1 so I guess with the head in parallel with this capacitor it forms a tuned circuit so that makes it os makes the preamp now oscillate and put a tone onto the um, other track so I guess that's how you record the um, sync pulses for your projector and that switch we saw on the last diagram is just pushed and it powers the whole thing up so I guess that's um, a very very quick explanation of how it, it all seems to work hopefully this diagram is uh, accurate but uh, uh, there's no telling well there we go there's a quick second look at the uh, fawn uh, synchronization amp for a slide projector and a Ferguson reel-to-reel -reel. hope you found that interesting and I hope that was a help to um, Edward and anyone else who wants to know what's inside this device 
um, and perhaps um, some circuit ideas for audio preamps um, or even slide control if you want to go back in time. You know, we don't we don't have to still use um, uh, an office slideshow, do we? We can actually still use a slide projector and a tape recorder. And indeed, I still have a slide projector with remote control. Um, just need to pair pair this with a reel to reel, and then I can make some boring. Uh, boring slideshows using some of my old slides. I actually wonder can you still get slide film these days? I'm not sure, I know you can get black and white film still, uh, negatives, but uh, can you still get uh, slide positive film? I'm not sure. Anyway. Okay, so following on, here's the Chinon again that I was uh, showing before um, in the same video. And uh, the question was, does it have AC bias? Do you know I never checked that last time? So um, I might well um, connect this up and uh, see if it has. Well, I forgot about the multitude of screws that uh, needed to be removed to remove this uh, beast from its uh, case. But uh, there you go, there's a 4K shot. So that's uh, a little bit clearer than last time. Okay, so I've got my scope across the array's head, and that distinctly looks like DC to me. So let's try putting it across the record head, it's the uh, recording head. And yes, there is bias there, so, uh, AC bias there. It looks about 40 kilohertz. One, two, one, two, one, two into the microphone, so you can see the uh, audio superimposed on it. You can see how big the bias signal is compared to the audio signal. This is the film synchronisation head and there doesn't really seem to be anything much going on it. I'm flicking the switch between sync, record and normal and there's nothing really there. So perhaps you have to have an 8mm film um, camera plugged in in order to see something on the, t on the head. Congratulations to you Edward on getting one of these uh, fawn units and tracking one down. That must have uh, taken quite a bit of effort but uh, I hope you found the circuit interesting nevertheless and having a good look inside it. And uh, hi to the cassette master and uh, obviously it's half AC bias. <laughs> Pretty about the array's head. But there we go. Anyway I hope that answers some questions on these two units and uh, I'll see you soon.